So in here, this has all the information of the HPI and the review of systems, medications, allergies that we programmed into the case. So I'll start with an open-ended question. Progressively increasing left lower quadrant abdominal pain for the past three days. Okay, so I can ask some other things like any fevers, any set fever, any vomiting, or diarrhea. Okay. What medical problems do you have? So getting the past medical history, just a history of depression, so nothing else there, nothing surgical. I can ask that specifically though. Any surgery history? Nope. No surgery history. So that's good. Are you on any medications? Well, butrin, that's it. Any allergies? This is all standard historical information. No allergies. Good. And then lastly, any urinary symptoms? Just looking for kidney stone. Nope. No urinary symptoms. So we can go to the exam. Airway breathing and circulation seem okay. So I don't think we need to do any of that. And since he's complaining of abdominal pain, we'll want to do the abdominal exam. So he's tender in the left lower quadrant. I'd also do a GU exam to make sure there's no hernias and a back exam to make sure that there's no costovertebral angle tenderness, CVA tenderness. That would suggest a stone. And the last thing is looking for rash like uh, shingles, but he doesn't have any of that. From a stabilization standpoint, there's not much we need to do. We'll attach him to the monitor to get our vitals. So he's febrile tachycardic. So we'll insert an IV and correct his tachycardia with a little bit of fluids. Just give him a one liter bolus. Let's see if he responds to that. And on my differential, most of it's going to be GI. So he's got pain, but I'll put appendicitis, even though it's left side, because um, you can get left sided diverticulitis. Diverticulitis is the leading one. We don't have any hernias that on, on exam, so that's probably okay. And sigmoid volvulus is a possibility too. Okay. Um, I think now with our differential done, he's still tachycardic, so I can give him another bolus of fluid. See if that helps, and then we're going to do some acetaminophen for his fever. Okay, and I'd like to give him some morphine for his pain. Okay, now in the investigation tab, we're going to do some labs, basic chem profile, CBC lactate, which will um, look for any low perfusion to the gut, liver function tests and lipase, and we'll check a urinalysis just uh, to make sure that it's not a kidney stone or urinary tract infection. So pretty much all the labs. He's got a little bit of a white blood cell count. Nothing else really significant there. And in terms of imaging, since he's tender in the abdomen, I'd want to get a CT scan of his abdomen. Let's see what that shows. Stranding around the sigmoid colon, so that's consistent with diverticulitis, and you can see it on the imaging as well. So now in terms of interventions, I would personally treat him with antibiotics. Um, so we'll do Cipro. And is all standard treatment for diverticulitis. And I think at this point, I talk to the primary care. They can follow up with him in the next two to three days. So since he is stable, uh, he's okay for discharge. And we're going to give him the diagnosis of diverticulitis and hand him off.